Good afternoon. I'm here today with Larry Cadis, who has been involved with ORT for more than 30 years from Cleveland, Ohio, um, and is also ORT America's um, most recent past national president um, and has held many other prestigious titles and has been a real pleasure for me to work with for the last few years since I came to ORT America. Um, and today we're gonna reflect a little bit on, on ORT America during our 100th anniversary year, which is really an exciting milestone. Um, and we've been celebrating since January and it'll continue through the end of the year. And we're delighted to have, um, to have you with us, Larry. Thanks. <laughs> Great. So why don't you start by just telling us how you first um, became involved with ORT? Okay, so it, it's actually a combination of things. Um, the first part is a very good friend of mine who I've known my entire life. I ran into one day and he said, you know, I'm involved with an organization that I think you would really enjoy being involved with. And I said, tell me a little bit more. We got together, we talked about it, and he told me about ORT. And that was one part. The other part, in Cleveland at the time, there was the development of Young Men's ORT. This is part of the old American ORT organization. Although I'm a little bit older than that group of guys, um, I it, it really came together at the same time. So it was an opportunity for me to get involved with an organization where I could not only um, think about what is more than just my nuclear world here in Cleveland and the people that I'm involved with, but bring it to a larger um, stage, whether it was the Cleveland stage, whether it was national or international. And I really appreciated the opportunity to get involved with not only the organization and what it represented and what they were doing, but the people here in Cleveland um, at the time, Ronnie Wallace was the director. Ronnie and I became good friends and had the opportunity to um, really develop what was eventually going to be um, a really strong and vibrant organization here in Cleveland. Which it is today. It actually. still is. It still is. Why do you think that ORT's mission is relevant today? How do you see it continuing in its importance and impact? If you would have asked me that question six months ago, I probably would have answered it differently. Mm -hmm. I think that with what I'm seeing on um, the international stage, what's going on in Ukraine, mm -hmm. what the challenges that this country is facing, um, I think that it is very similar to post-World War II. When ORT was there in um, the DP camps, what's happening in Ukraine has so many similarities. I look at the destruction of the cities and I look at what is the displacement of people. And I think about what is it that it's going to be to help people moving forward. And that to me is what ORT has represented throughout its history. It looks at what the situation is today, but it thinks about where people need to be in the future and what it can do on the ground to make a difference in their lives. If they make a difference in, in a person's life, it makes a difference in a family. From a family, it becomes a community. And I think that we are going to be faced with those challenges moving forward. Whatever the outcome of the war in Ukraine will be, and I'm hopeful that it will be that Ukraine will survive as um, the country that it was and be able to build upon that rich history that it had. But the fact is that organizations like ORT, and I really do believe or it will be there because children need to be educated. People need education to advance and to move forward. And I really think that that's the future. That is what ORT does. It can change the destiny for people, their families, and for their community moving forward. Yeah, I think we probably would have said a lot of similar things in response to COVID, you know, just in the last few years. Sure. Now we have this new moment in history where each, each of these big global impact moments 
in history give us an opportunity to think about education and what people need in order to be successful in whatever the next environment, whether it's, you know, certain skills or world of work or, you know, other challenges. So I, I agree with you. And they're um, going to be, and, and those, and those challenges will be changing. I mean, you know, when, when you look at a city that has been, you know, and, or, or families that have been torn apart by, by the ravages of war, or even displacement um, in, in, even when you think about our work in the former Soviet Union, um, things are changing. Thinking back to your term as national president, is there something that stands out, a moment that you're very proud of or an accomplishment that happened at that time? Oh, I, that, you know, it, it, that's a very easy question, actually, Barbara. At the time that I was president of Ord America, Conrad Giles, Connie Giles, was the president of World Ord. And we are struggling to figure out how to raise more money, what we can do to benefit the students of Ord. And if we don't do something now, it will never get done. We saw a challenge where we had two different organizations that were had the same goal, but we were going at it in very different ways. And we thought about the way that we can bring it together and we were able to accomplish it. And Conrad is someone, his, he is so well-respected in the Jewish world. He was able to bring that gravitas to the table that allowed that to happen. He was able to reach out to so many different people. And at the time when I was president of Ord America, I was able to reach from within to the people within Ord America to say, you know what, this is the right time to bring everything together. And Connie really understood that from a World Ord perspective. I understood it from an Ord America perspective. And we both had the leadership that had the vision capable of bringing that together at the right time. So that I think when I look back on my term, um, it was that tipping point of bringing the two organizations, um, World Ort and Ort America together um, to be one voice. To mm. be, to yeah, and I think we are stronger today because of that, because of the work that you did. I think it's a stronger organization. You know, we've made a lot of effort to bring in some new people and to be cultivating our pipeline of future leaders to take ORD into our next hundred years. Do you have any particular message for them or um, something you think they can really bring to the organization going forward? Education is something that is a family value. It transcends being an individual value. And um, I think that when I look at the next, gen and, and then I think about what is it that will sustain an organization and it's getting young people involved. At this point in time, we need as ORT to think about what is the next generation? What is their value system? What is it that they're going to look out for and wanna do for their family, their young kids? And at the top of that list, in my opinion, is educating their children. And when you think about the fact that how fortunate we are, that we have those choices. One of the things that I think is so great about ORT is that ORT reaches so many people in so many countries and they look at it through the same lens from a totally different perspective. And that lens is what can we do to educate our children, to give them that opportunity to build upon the foundation that we are providing for them. Any final words that you want to share about our 100th celebration? Um, you mentioned Connie. We'll be celebrating him together in New York in November. Um, at our you know, I, I think that when I think about it, you know, I'm very fortunate. I had the opportunity to have a number of mentors within ORT. It was tremendous to be able to think about an organization that they were passionate about and to give me the opportunity to be involved alongside of them, I learned so much. And this is an organization that with all the things that I've had the opportunity to do, the one thread that has carried on through all my involvement 
is my involvement with ORT. Mm -hmm. it, it's something that I just will always appreciate. And it's something that um, I've been very fortunate and blessed to have that opportunity to do. Well, thank you. Thank you for all you do. And I would say any of our up and coming leaders will be lucky to have you as their mentor um, as they take on the reins. So, yeah. so thanks it'll, for It'll everything. be fun to talk to them and to be able to share experiences. And hopefully they'll they'll be able to look back on you know, their experience and, and yeah. feel as much pride in what's been done because I think we've accomplished a lot. And to have an organization that um, can reach a milestone of 100 years, um, that says a lot. It really does. I mean, I, there aren't that many organizations that have been able to do that. Um, there aren't that many organizations that have had the um, um, such a, a diverse history. I mean, it's a really diverse history. I mean, when you think about women's American art evolving, American ORT evolving, bringing the two of them together, bring the whole world of ORT together. It really is quite something. And, you know, it's something that we are very fortunate for our family to have been involved with over yeah. the years. Anyway. Great. Thank you. Thank you for spending Thanks. some time with us. I'll see you in Cleveland in June.